the almighty creator is offering for you to come into connection with him. And if you come into connection with him and let him speak words into your soul and tell you what's on his heart and what he wants you to do, and you begin to walk out what he wants you to do, you will say, let there be light, and it'll be done for you. The Lord says, I not only want to restore what you've lost, I want to restore you. I want to restore your heart. I want to restore your confidence. I want to restore your joy, your peace. I want to make an example out of your life so that other people can say, that's what I want God to do in my life. One word from God can change your life forever. Well, hello, my name is Jerry Dearman, Senior Pastor of The Rock in Anaheim, California, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to Solid Life. Now, just before we open up the Word of God together, I want to share how privileged I feel to be used by God to partner with people like you to make a meaningful difference in people's lives. You know, it was about 30 years ago that I found myself in a desperate spot. I was bound with sin, I had a very low self-esteem, I was unemployed, and I really felt like a failure going somewhere to happen. But one day, I saw someone preaching a life-changing word on television, and I ordered those cassette tapes. Do you remember those? They literally changed my life. And ever since that time, I've had a passion to see other people set free and to disciple people with the truths that God used to change me. And today, we at Jerry Dearman Ministries have the privilege to not only teach the Word of God all over the world through television and to disciple thousands of people through oslonline.com, but to take OSL, or Operation Solid Lives, to many countries like Sri Lanka, Bulgaria, Haiti, and the Philippines to train their precious pastors to transform their congregations with life-changing discipleship. What a privilege. And I want to thank all of you who've been partnering with us. And I also want to extend a very warm welcome to those of you who have recently begun watching. Now, today's message is called Supernatural Fruitfulness. And let me just tell you, this is a powerful message. So let's open our Bibles together, and I'll be back at the end of the broadcast to share a few thoughts. I want to talk to you about supernatural fruitfulness. Supernatural fruitfulness today. And we want to begin in Genesis 1, reading verses 27 and 28 loudly and together. Let's read. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. I want you to notice that this is the very first thing that God said to Adam and Eve after he created them. He opened up his mouth and he said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over it. These things came out of the same mouth, from the same heart, of the same God that just finished saying over the last six days, let there be light, and there was light. Let there be an atmosphere, and there was an atmosphere. Let the green grass appear, and the fruit trees, and it was so. And let there be sea creatures, and let there be cattle, and let there be creeping things, and it was so, and it was so, and it was so, and now he creates man in his own image and his own likeness, and he opens up his mouth yet again and says to them, be fruitful. But now, instead of God releasing the power for it to automatically happen, he's saying, no, I've created you in my image and according to my likeness so that you can function like me. Now, that doesn't make us God. Some people get off and say, we're God. No, well, hold on just a minute, Jack. Stay with the Bible. God is God, 
But we have become joint heirs through Christ. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. So we've become one with him through Jesus. See, so it is too good to be true, it seems, but it is true. But God is now speaking words to us and saying, be fruitful. So the same power that was released when he said, let there be light, was released in these commands to us, delegating his authority, delegating his power to do things on this earth that are intended to be, listen, unstoppable. When God said, let there be light, it was unstoppable. When God said, let there be light, we didn't get a tree. We got exactly what he said. And when the Lord said to us, be fruitful, he doesn't intend for us to have barrenness in our lives. He intended for us to be fruitful to multiply, to fill, to subdue, and to have dominion. But in chapter 3, if you'll remember, the serpent came in and began to speak words of deception. And it led Adam and Eve to sin, to do something that God did not say to do. In fact, to do what he said not to do. And that sin disconnected them from the life of God, disconnected them from the power of God. So now what God commanded them to do and how he empowered them to do it has now been disconnected. But Jesus was sent and Jesus came to reconnect us and to once again give us the command saying your days of barrenness are over. I'm reconnecting you in the spirit to the almighty God and what he originally said that you can do and that you will do is to be fruitful. This is now going to happen in your life. And Jesus began to teach us how this was going to happen. So this is what God is saying today. And the Lord Jesus is going to teach us today how to be supernaturally fruitful. So we're studying in this first series this command, be fruitful. And the Lord says, your days of barrenness are over. I am going to teach you to be fruitful. It's not too late. You're not too far gone. I know how to turn the tide. I know how to lead you into green pastures and beside still waters. Now I want you to listen to Colossians chapter 1, verse 10 from the NIV. Paul said, And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please Him in every way. Now notice this. Bearing fruit in every good work. Bearing fruit in every good work. The Lord doesn't want you to bear fruit in one area of your life and not another. He said bearing fruit in every good work. You know, we can see somebody that may be successful in business and they work real hard and they make a lot of money and then people say, wow, you're successful, look at you. Yeah, you know, well, this happened, Lo, and then this, and look, we're going on down the line, and they're so successful, and then they turn around to say, hey, look how successful we are, and their family's gone. Their life fell apart on the personal side. That is not what God's called you to. God did not call you to fruitfulness in one part of your life and destruction in the other part. The Bible says here, that God's will is for you to bear fruit in every good work. Listen to Psalm chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And listen to this. And whatever he does shall prosper. And whatever he does shall prosper. And whatever you do will prosper. Whatever, not just one area. Whatever you do shall prosper. Listen to Deuteronomy 15.10. The Lord your God will bless you in all your works and in all to which you put your hand. The Lord your God will bless you in all your works and in all to which you put your hand. You know, we've heard the saying, Man, everything he touches turns to gold. That's exactly what the Lord's saying. The Lord's saying, everything you touch will turn to gold. 
Everything you put your hand to, there'll, there'll be a prospering of it. Now, why? Is it because you're so smart? No. Is it because you're so educated? No. Charismatic? No. It's because there's something on you. There's something of the power of God that's on your life, so it doesn't matter what you're focusing on, what you're putting your hand to. It has something that the average human does not have. It's the power of God. And this is what the Lord is saying. See, nobody is blessed in every area of their life. That has to be supernatural. Nobody is naturally successful. So many people we see out there, oh, they're really successful. Well, they're successful in that area. How are all the other areas? Nobody's successful in every area of their life. That's supernatural. Supernatural. Now, let me tell you what people do today. People that make a lot of money use the money to make it look like they're successful in every part of their life. But why do we go and we stand at the grocery store and we look at the magazines and we see all these famous people, wealthy people, and their lives are falling apart? See, to be fruitful in every part of your life, that's supernatural. And it starts on the inside. It starts on the inside. It's not just a facade. It's something that comes from within. And it comes from the Lord. It comes from the Lord. I believe we need to read the Bible more closely. Amen. Instead of just reading it through and just having a general sense, I believe we need to read these details. And everything he puts his hand to will prosper. God didn't just put that in there because the Bible was a little short and he just wanted to stick in some more words to make it a little longer. No, God is speaking very precise words, just like when he said, let there be light. There's not a tree, there's light. And when he says, be fruitful, and when he says, everything you put your hand to will prosper, that is exactly what he means. Did you know that you can miss out on the blessing of God because you don't read precisely? And you don't take it literally. You don't believe that God really wants to do it in your life. But I'm telling you today, God wants you to be extravagantly, supernaturally fruitful in every area of your life. And it's easy to do. I'm going to show you that today. It's easy to do. It's not hard. It's not hard. Now let's turn over to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. We've looked at this passage before, but I believe light from heaven is going to come into your heart and soul and mind today. John chapter 15 and verse 1. And Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear fruit. What? More fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears what? Much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. That phrase, so you will be my disciples, a disciple is a lookalike. And Jesus is saying, if you'll do what I'm teaching you right here, your life will look like my life. Your fruitfulness will look like my fruitfulness. In fact, you remember Jesus said in John 14, 12, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he shall do also and greater works than these. Jesus said, you'll even outdo me with works. Well, he was only here for three years or so in his ministry. And he said, you'll do even greater works. So Jesus in this passage is teaching us how to be supernaturally fruitful. So let's pay attention to a few phrases. Look at verse 2 once again. He said, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, the Father takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, the Father prunes 
that it may bear more fruit. So Jesus is saying the Father, Father God, is not going to leave you at the level of fruitfulness where you are right now. The Father wants to help you. He wants to prune in your life, not to take away from you, but to help you to go to a new level of fruitfulness. So the Father prunes every branch that bears fruit so that it may bear more fruit. Look at verse 4. Jesus said, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. As the branch, if you pulled a branch, just, just say grapes, and you took a branch and you plucked it off of the vine, well, that branch does not have an opportunity now to bear fruit because it's been disconnected from the life source. He said, just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it's connected to the vine, he said, neither can you unless you're connected to me. That doesn't mean that you prayed a prayer a couple of years ago or that you attend a church. That means that you are connected actively to him and receiving something directly from Jesus. Notice in verse 5, I'm the vine, you're the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears what? Much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Some years ago I read that. And I just said to the Lord, Lord, there, there are all these people out there. I mean, Bill Gates and people that you would say and people say they've changed the world. They've changed the world. And yet Jesus said, no, without me, you can do nothing. Zero. He didn't say little. He said nothing. Nothing. All the things that people do and have success doing in life without Jesus is zero. It's nothing, absolutely nothing. It does not count. The only things that really can be done that count to the almighty creator are things that are done through Jesus. Without me, you can do nothing. He said, without me, you can do nothing. Well, wait a minute, they changed the world. I mean, people all over the world have been affected by them. Yeah, Jesus said, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? So it doesn't matter how successful you look to other people. It doesn't matter how much money you have in the bank or how much fame you have. If you have not had the supernatural power of God impacting people's lives, you have done nothing that counts. And you may even lose your own soul in the process. So Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. And then look at verse 7. In verse 7, and I've read this, I don't know how many hundreds of times, taught this, but some time ago, my wife said something to me that God had shown her that brought light, and it's going to bring light to you today. This is a game changer. Jesus said this in verse 7. Let's look at it. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, listen to this, and it shall be done for you, not by you. It shall be done for you, not by you. See, there's a lie in our heads that if we're going to be successful, it comes through hard work. Hard work to get a degree. Hard work to start and develop a business. And the energy of my flesh, sleeping less, working more, studying more, my intellect, my energy is going to accomplish great things. Jesus said, without me, you can do Nothing, nothing. But Jesus said, let me show you a more powerful approach. If you will take the time to connect with me and let my words come into your ears, let my words come into your eyes, let my words come into your heart so that you're listening to me and what I'm saying. 
And while you're doing that, there's a lie in your mind that says, you don't have time for this. Man, you've got a task list today. You've got to get on it. You've got things that you've got to do. And if you don't get out there and make it happen, you're not going to be successful. And Jesus is saying, shut that out and listen to me. Shut that out and listen to me. I'm going to tell you things. I'm working on you. And your mind is saying, you don't have time to read the Bible today. You don't have time to pray today. You've got to get out there and make it happen. So you've got to understand how fruitfulness is going to happen in your life. Is it going to happen with the energy of the flesh? Is it going to happen with less sleep and more hours? Oh, no, no. We're going to work smarter, not harder. So what does that mean to you? How is it happening? Well, I'm working on the Internet, or I've got this subscription, or I'm going to this seminar, or I've got this mentor. Who is it that makes you successful? Because here's what Jesus said. If you will buy in to this offer that I'm making you and believe in it so that you take the time, set things aside, and come and abide in me and let my words come into your ears, into your eyes, and into your hearts. Let my words abide in you. Here's the way it'll work. You will ask what you desire and it will be done for you. Your job will be to ask. And Jesus says, and my job will be to do it for you. Oh, that's revelation. That's light from heaven. He's not looking for you to make yourself successful because you're so limited in your ability without God. You've only got human energy, human strength, human intellect. But the almighty creator is offering for you to come into connection with him. And if you come into connection with him and let him speak words into your soul and tell you what's on his heart and what he wants you to do, and you begin to walk out what he wants you to do, he says, here's the way it'll work. You'll do exactly what I did in Genesis 1. You will say, let there be light, and it'll be done for you. You will speak, let the green grass appear, let the fruit trees appear, let this business be successful, and it will be done for you, for you. That doesn't mean that you don't have to go to work and do the things that you're responsible for, but no longer do you believe that the natural things that you are doing are going to produce the results because the results that you're looking out for are not natural results. It's not one plus one equals two. It's one, it's one can put a thousand to flight to 10,000. See, all of a sudden you're calculating with supernatural mathematics, supernatural fruitfulness. And Jesus is saying, this is how it will be done for you. Your days of barrenness are over, not because you work harder, not because you just happen to be at the right place at the right time, but because you rejected the lie that says stopping and taking time to connect with Jesus and ingest the word of God into your heart, into your eyes and ears while your mind is telling you, you don't have time for this. You better get after it. You better get going. You're not going to be successful. And you say, you stop it. Jesus does it for me. Jesus does it for me. That doesn't mean I just stay home all day, I don't go to work, I don't show up. No. But it means that I know where my bread and butter is. I know where the real power is that is unstoppable. And it's in me stopping, setting things aside, taking time, and saying, Jesus, speak to me today. Jesus, you're my strength. You're my success. You're my source. And he says, if you will do that, then here's how to work. You will ask what you desire, and I will do it for you. <laughs> Listen, somebody in here, you've been longing to function at a level that God has shown you, and it has not happened. And Jesus is speaking so precisely today to say, do this, and it will become so. Do this, 
and it will be. Well, that was the message, supernatural fruitfulness. And this is what Jesus is teaching us, that it's not God's will that we just survive or barely scrape by or just plug along. It's God's will that the power of the Holy Spirit causes us to experience extraordinary fruitfulness. At the beginning of this year, I took time to fast and pray. And the same God who said, let there be light, and there was light, began to speak some things that he wanted to do this year. I took that prophetic word and I put it on a bookmark and titled it, 2016 Word from the Lord. And I want to read it to you and you just see if it bears witness in your heart. Here's what it says. The Lord says, your days of barrenness are over. I am going to teach you to be fruitful. It's not too late. You're not too far gone. I know how to turn the tide. I know how to lead you into green pastures and besides still waters. The Lord is going to multiply you beginning this year. You are not limited to your circumstances. The Lord is speaking a powerful word of multiplication over you, and you'll begin to see it this year. If you follow me, your days of scarcity, the winter, the wilderness, are over. The world cannot satisfy you. It is not my will for you to be dominated and tormented by your enemies. The days of being overcome by your enemies are over. I am raising you up and strengthening you to overcome your enemies and my enemies. And that's what I believe the Lord is saying to you for this year. As a thank you for your support of this ministry, Jerry Dearman would like to send you a copy of his new series, Be Fruitful. God wants you to be fruitful in every area of your life. In this new series, Pastor Jerry shows that what God said in the beginning is still true today. God is still saying, be fruitful. Through this powerful series, you'll begin to flourish and be fruitful in areas that in the past may have been desolate, even desperate. Don't let your current circumstances define your future. You may not be impressed by what's going on right now, but the Lord is saying, that's not your future. If you turn to me, your latter end will be great. God wants this year to be the year you break free and flourish. He wants to take you from where you are now to where he wants you to be. Request this powerful five message CD series with the bonus 2016 Word of the Lord bookmark for your gift of $35 or more to support the ongoing outreaches of Jerry Dearman Ministries today. Call 1-800-544-8000 or visit jerrydearman.com. Solid Life with Jerry Dearman is made possible by the generous gifts of those who have joined hands with us to take the message of Jesus Christ around the world. Jerry Dearman Ministries is building solid lives around the globe through the life-transforming power of the Word of God by discipling people in every nation. For more information about Jerry Dearman Ministries or one of The Rock's many campuses around the country, please go to jerrydearman.com. Write to us at P.O. Box 4970 Anaheim, California, 92803, or call us at 1-800-544-8000.